This is Clean Radio. Welcome everybody out there to Clean Radio. And uh, what a start. My thing isn't working. And uh, are you guys... I have headphones. You guys' things aren't working? Okay, we're all working now, but I'd like to welcome everybody out there to Clean Radio. Uh, go to facebook.com slash clean radio. Tell us what you think. I... Um, have this amazing shirt on tonight. One of our fans, Andrew from Portland, who's in the fire department, for my 16-year birthday. Yeah. He made me, I guess, uh, an, an unofficial member of one of the Portland fire departments. I don't want to say exactly which one. Why so, not? Because you don't actually have to show up and fight a fire. I, you know what? I don't think they want me showing up to fight a fire <laughs> unless it was a spiritual fire that needed healing. Right. Okay, I, I that was the, that was a good change of whatever. I gave it a shot, but I also want to welcome our new station out there. It's News Radio 1120 KPNW, Eugene, Oregon. And again, go to cleanradio.com. Check out my latest blog. Um, one of the things I actually was talking about in this blog, Andrew, is going through pain and sobriety. As some people know, because I've been complaining for the last week, my back is out. Well, you've, you've been complaining for a lot longer than the last week, right. but just but about your back this About week. the back specifically yeah, okay. this week. And it's been a really big struggle, and I wrote about this because when we get sober, and I've been sober quite a while, you hear a lot of things in the 12-step room, Twelve step rooms. You hear about the dangers of taking narcotics. You hear, you know, once you're sober. And, um, you know, narcotics were never an issue for me, really. So all week long, I'm struggling. Do I? What do I do? So by the time Wednesday came around, I had done nothing. Mm -hmm. My back is even in, in, in worse shape than had I just on Monday decided to really do something about it. And my question to you tonight is, can a recovering addict, can a recovering alcoholic take a narcotic safely? Well, I, th I think more importantly, you need to go back to the, your whole judgment call on whether you should see a doctor right. sooner. I mean, certainly there's a lot of treatment without narcotics. Yeah, right. So, you know, my first thing is don't be in denial just because you're an AA that you can't go to a doctor because you might get any kind of type of medication. Right. You know, that right there is my first concern. You know, anybody that has a physical problem should go seek help as soon as they can. Um, as far as narcotic use, you know, that can, d that can be different by different people. There's obviously people that are more susceptible to issues with narcotics and there's others that, you know, their primary drug like it was alcohol. And while there's a risk of them developing a to high tolerance and addiction to opiates, um, in some cases it might be the re right treatment and, you know, nobody should ever be denied medication. So, and, and and it's a big question that a lot of us has have, and I'd love to ask our listeners. I need to qualify out there. that. There are times that some people <laughs> should be denied medication. But. Uh, so give us a call. The number right to access to medication. The so. number is 800-222-5222. That's 800-222-5222. Um, my question out there is tonight for people, you know, that are listening. Can it work somebody in recovery? And it's debate. I mean, and, and this is a big reason you and I started the show, because we're all for, you know, people going to psychiatrists and, and getting help mm -hmm. and talking about issues of having to take not just pain meds, but, you know, antidepressants and all of these different things. And it's a huge issue. Yeah, I mean, I think it's an issue for everybody. Yeah. Certainly for those that are addicted, it's an even bigger issue. Yeah. And there's lots of questions. You know, there's a standard saying in AA about anything above that, you know, uh, neck is that affects your head from you should take up. Yeah, yeah. from the neck up or whatever and that's a crazy statement i mean that's just like complete denial about what actually is medicine's capable of and what a, a good physician working with um you know a patient that's really aware um uh, can accomplish with medication although that's not always you know all of the treatment you don't want to just be masking symptoms certainly like i'd like to know what's actually wrong with your back Yes, I, I've actually had this, uh, you know, I've actually had it checked out. I don't want the show to be, but diagnosing my back. <laughs> Why but, not? But, the whole week has been about yeah, your but, back. But I've actually, had this, I've actually had this, you know, it was the left side of my body is a lot weaker than the right side of my body because, uh -huh. you know, I'm right-handed hand, right, right and I always overcompensated while playing sports. Uh -huh. So I have to strengthen my core, as I've been told recently. <laughs> Wait, this I, goes back to uh, you using your right hand more than your yes, left hand? Yes, that's exactly right. And being right hand. I'm uh, sure that had nothing to do with sports. And, uh... uh <laughs> this is a family-friendly show, and if you just tuned in, you okay. are listening to Clean Radio. So I've had all the MRIs done. I have had that right. stuff done, and, you know, some, you know, they tell me, and I wrote about this. The, the one thing everybody always tells me that I, I stay as far away from as possible is actually doing the physical therapy. Because <laughs> That's cause, the most important thing. It, it, that is exactly, but I, you know, I am not a huge fan of the gym. You must be a huge fan of pain, then. I, 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 that's, but again, that's, you know, I, I don't yeah. want to just say this. You know, I know a lot of alcoholics out there, and I know you're in the same boat, or you know, and addicts out there. We struggle with this. It's the the age old question. You're, you know, it's like um, of getting healthy. 
of really taking care of ourselves, mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. actually realizing that we might live. Yeah, let's not talk about that. No, no. <laughs> uh, so give us a call. The number is 800-222-5222. That's 800-222-5222. But you know what? Everybody out there in America is waiting for our amazing guest right now. She is has been in everything since 19... <laughs> 89 and uh, no 89? she's one of my favorite 89. 99. she's one of my what? favorite people in America she has been recently seen in the telenovela oh God. La, La, <laughs> I can't think of a good telenovela name so let's just welcome back as always our favorite one of our favorite our favorite guest to clean oh. radio ever Jennifer, easy in the eyes, he meant us. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I, I miss you guys. Yeah, I can't believe he's still using that same nickname. No, I like yeah. it, though. I mean, oh, she, I don't, she not like a lot of people say that. Andrew, she oh. actually brought it up to me. No, she, I was like, she requested yes. No, I didn't request it. I don't lie. Patrick? Patrick, I did not request it. Pretty I was much. like, I remember <laughs> yeah. you used to call me easy on the eyes. That was it. There was no re there was no request. Don't even start. And by the way, I came in so happy. I was like, I miss you guys. And he was like, don't touch me, my back. I hate you. Oh, my God, life sucks. And I'm like, Patrick, how are you? of my life at work. I know. I mean, like, I, I was like, you just ruined it, Debbie Downer. Like, so excited to see you. And then you made your shirt like a crop top, top right now. And wow. there's a lot of things going on here. Judas having, yeah, Judas having like, an identity crisis. Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, maybe that. So you're right. It's, you're it's, right. It's, it's, going through a lot of changes lately. <laughs> it's, 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 I'm it's, going through a lot of changes, but too. But you know what? And I wanted to talk about that. Let's talk about Wait. that a little bit. Changes uh, in sobriety. Right. Because I uh, think, you know. Uh -oh. uh, no, it has to do a lot with being vulnerable, opening okay. up, going through changes. Right. And, uh, I, you know, the re big reason, you know, I love Jennifer. She's a, you know... Uh, but I, we already know, got I, that established. But I know you've been going through some... He only says it when we're doing right? the show. He oh, never yeah, says never it. He never says it when we're just hanging he out. Had, like, he was like, get the fuck away from oh, me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> beep, beep. Sorry. Jose, get Jose, the fuck away from me. That. This is what happens Thank when you. we bring Sorry. Hollywood people in the studio. I know. Those right? They're not trained at all. What happened uh, to like... I know professionalism. No, you know, you know who this she's, is? She's used to the bleeping out of reality TV. I know. That's what reality TV does to It's the housewife's fault. It's the housewife's fault. No, it was rehab. Celebrity rehab's fault. That made you a real swearer on there yeah, yeah. Okay. I, we're okay yeah. with blaming it on like when i'm getting rehab. beaten up by guys of uh -huh. course okay so let's get back yeah. to this yeah. clean yeah. radio <laughs> jennifer i know you've recently had some medical issues that's you know i've been following you on facebook and i like that you post you post to your fans you know you're open and honest with your fans and they love you you have like the most dedicated fan base of women my biggest fear is ever is getting you getting <laughs> mad, you me? mad yeah you getting mad yeah. at me and um it's but, amazing how my my friends on the social media world are so loyal i, I mean i'm like blown away by it it's true I'm, it's I'm, amazing how many women i know or i mean guys i know that pretend to be women online to get closer to jennifer oh and then really? stalk her and then come up behind her it's <laughs> oh, terrible that's scary. yeah it's so a little then awful. i have to go home alone tonight she's been doing this for like three months it was know. you all along yeah, yeah, it was you know mary me. k from iowa that's <laughs> that's true <Judah. laughs> isn't that just, that's called catfishing right <laughs> yep and uh if you oh just my god i was just talking about catfishing to someone why you got catfished? No, no. You're planning on it? No. Let's not no, talk I'm about the real it thing. I'm the real thing. Like, I mean, I know who I am, but like, you can get catfished easily. Yeah. Especially when you don't know who you're talking back to, or. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's get back okay. to the Anyways. topic at hand. And, and let's and, and again, you're listening to Clean Radio. We're having a little bit of fun, but the number is 800 5222 That's 800-222-5222. Question is tonight out there and everybody listening, can you take narcotics successfully if you're in recovery? Um, got calls. I want to let's go to Sebastian because I'd actually like to hear about this from him. Sebastian, welcome to Clean Radio. Hi there. Thanks for having me, guys. Thank hey, you for calling in. Hi. So. I don't know. So I've been sober for a little bit over four hey. and a half years, and uh, I've got a lot of friends who've gone through situations where, in fact, they did need to take some sort of narcotic uh, to relieve themselves from pain. I mean, my understanding or my belief is that, uh, you know, being recovered, I didn't get sober myself personally to, like, have to hide or shelter myself necessarily from the world. I got sober to, like, bring myself back to life, you know? Mm. Um and I got the opportunity, I mean, like, a lot of my friends have got the opportunity now. Being an addict, I don't think I should be uncomfortable if I ever need some sort of medical treatment, anything along those lines. But in the same regard, I feel like uh, being an alcoholic, I have a responsibility to tell a physician, tell a doctor, you know, that I am a recovering addict, that I am a recovering alcoholic, um, that if there's other forms of treatment possible for me to not have taken a narcotic, that I would prefer that. But... And no time do I want to be necessarily uncomfortable. So I would give any sort of narcotic, as I've done for friends, or, you know, give a narcotic uh, drug to uh, family members or friends so they can uh, control it in mm. any case. 
Yeah. I mean, certainly that's a good precaution is to have somebody monitor your medication for you. And, you know, um, and once again, I think that everybody has a lot of personal choice in their own medical treatment. Um, and it's important to be involved. And it's important to ask questions to a physician, like, are there other types of treatment than what you might do just by using an opiate because it's easy? Um, there are right. more difficult ways to... Uh, deal with it, but sometimes there aren't. And but still, you as a patient have a choice to have a procedure or not have a procedure, to use medication or not use medication. And uh, people shouldn't just necessarily go without questioning what's going on with their doctor. At the same point, I think that it's important to understand that doctors spend a lot of time in school and a lot of time training, and they know some things that we don't. So. Um, depending right. on what your medical condition is, it needs to be a collaboration. But remember, the doctor is the expert, not the internet. You know, I, there's an old saying like, "Go out on the internet and find out what's wrong with you, and you'll always end up with cancer." You know, it's like, <laughs> right. and so you know, it's sort of funny that you say that, by the way, because if you go on WebMD, yeah. right, and you type you in the click symptoms, it enough, it, it, you yeah. Click, yeah. You, yeah, you end up with cancer yeah. or something. <laughs> yeah. That's right, because it's, it's, it's. I just it, did that. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah, you just did, <laughs> and, and it's terrifying. It's terrifying. Yeah. 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 Was that your experience? You actually did the same thing, Jennifer? Yeah. Never self-diagnose yourself on yeah. the internet. Yeah. I started looking through everything. It was like, you know, pretty much you're dying. You get to cancer. Yeah. You yeah. do get to cancer. Yeah. You really yeah. do on those things. So, Sebastian, <laughs> I actually have a question for you because this is something I actually was talking about or wrote about, too, is, you know, so you're in the 12-step world, obviously. You're sober and you hear these horror stories. And it's always the horror stories about the person that took the narcotic that had the bad reaction. You know, but often you don't hear about the person because they're almost scared to share that they had to take it. They did it successfully. They did it with their doctor. And um, you don't hear that a lot. Right. I mean, what, you know. Yeah, it's, not, it's generally, and, and in my experience, you know, I got sober in uh, young people's alcohol anonymous. So it's been uh, a lot of people, I think, in the young people world of alcohol anonymous suffered from opiate addiction. I mean, myself included. Um, not only just alcohol being the root of our problem, but among other things. And, uh, yeah, you're, you're right. You don't necessarily hear about too many success stories, um, but they're out there. Yeah. I mean, if, if you pose a, a question in, like, a crosstalk meeting or something to that effect, like, I'm sure you can find some success stories. Let's, let's, let's do that this week, Sebastian. <laughs> let's go to a crosstalk meeting. I <laughs> love that. Yeah. And let's pose that question. <laughs> you know what, Sebastian? There's I a might... good one in Sebastian, I'll tell you what, I don't want to say it on the air, but Facebook me, uh, you know, Facebook us, go to cleanradio.com uh, slash cleanradio, private message, maybe I'll go to a meeting with you this week and I'll pose oh, that's that. that's so cool. Yeah, I would love to do right, that. Sounds good, man. Okay. Can, yeah. I, yeah. can I say something uh, about that? I do. love that he was talking about that. I, um, I might as well just say it because I'm a success story on it. I, in early recovery, I had to have surgery, like, like female stuff, things going on. And so I had surgery and I had to take medication afterwards, but I thought it was really important. Like I talked to my doctor, I called him and I was like, you know, they're going to give me pain pills and he's like you know pain medication works when pain when you're in pain and I was like what but I have a team you know like I have my mom I had like somebody a couple my sponsor I had a couple of people around me that were that had a lot of times sobriety and they were monitoring it and after I, you know I only took it for a couple of days and then I got off of it and they kept asking me like am I okay am I okay and I was like why is everyone asking if I'm okay and it's because you know I had to take narcotics but right. You know, I was in such excruciating pain that I needed to do it. And then I just had um, a, an infection in my mouth and my tooth and whatever, and they they had to, uh, they wanted to give me medication. And again, I, I made sure that I had a, a team around me. You're just like falling apart. Yeah. I am falling well, apart, but yeah. I didn't end up taking it, you know, on yeah. that. But I am falling apart. Right? But no, you know what? I'm better. I'm better now. I have a fight I don't know. Today. I hit like 42 and things started just falling I'm off I'm not of me, there yet, but it's going to be there be there soon. <laughs> 42 and like I had a tooth-like thing. And oh my, really? Next Thank thing, you. Next thing you know, my back's hurting and then I'm getting my all back's old. This is, know, this is not the much. hour of power. <laughs> we, we really need Benny Hinn in here right now to do that like... <laughs> Hit me against the head. Your back is better. Right. And by the way, Sebastian, thanks for the call. Please draw, uh, message me on Facebook, okay? Will do. Thanks, guys. Thank Bye. you. Um, and if you just tuned in, you are listening to Clean Radio. Uh, in studio tonight with us is the lovely Jennifer Easy on the Eyes Jimenez. So give us a call. The number is 800-222-5222. I'm here too, Judah. That's 800-222-5222. Just Jennifer Easy on the Eyes Jimenez and Andrew 
even easier on the eyes. <laughs> Spans well, wig. I don't know what that means. It, so, uh, it, but yeah. so here's the thing. So we're discussing tonight, and Jennifer, a big reason. I mean, I wrote about this this week, but I was also noticing a lot of your posts. You're going through this physical stuff. You've had to go to the doctors, which is terrifying. I would imagine it is terrifying. I, um, you know, I don't think I don't know a lot of people if they know all this stuff, but I, you know, I went through a breakup too. Like I recently went through a breakup, and that like I've had my heart broken. I broke, you know, I've broken hearts. This one just like wow. threw me for a loop. You know, I was so deceived in it, and right. I'm I'm okay. I'm, I'm recovering now I'm fine with I'm okay but like in the beginning I, I was like I don't know how I'm gonna get through this night yeah. cut to I come back I was in Florida and I come back to go to the doctors because I haven't been feeling that well like I just I'm really run down and and I'm not 42 yet, but I'm run down all the time. And nothing... She had to get that in there, just to qualify. <laughs> just to throw it in there. You know, I just got to tell you, it's going to suck. And I'm <laughs> sure. I'm sure the way it's going for me right now, yeah. uh, I'm sure. But I, um, my doctor wanted to, like, X and A different things, you know, and so I, I had to do the back, uh, the x-rays, the MRIs. I w they did an early mammogram, and I know it's um, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, too. And um, I went and I did it, and... I got the call saying that something came back wrong and I was freaked out and they, I, I, you know, I was so scared and I've gone through a lot in my life and I thought, I, I don't think I have a fight in me, you know, and then they, and I, oh God, I'm getting teary eyed. So then I went in and, um, and then they found some stuff. Right. Oh God! Why am I crying? Because it's um, it's real. Because it's really real, I guess. Yeah. And you know, they they found in my right breast like two cysts and one lump. And um, they, I guess it's like what you're saying—they're so close together. And they wanted to go in and butcher it. And I'm trying to get a second opinion. And you know, when I found that out, like I thought, I don't think I honestly then was like I have no fight in me. Like I couldn't do it. And you know, again, I fought through so much. And um, two weeks ago, I was like, I woke up and I was in Florida, and I was like, I have a fight in me. And then Tuesday came in. I have a fight. I mean, like every day I'm like, I have a fight if I have to do it. But I've, you know, cha made some changes in my life and I'm getting really healthy. And I think it is, you know, I know that I didn't come this far to, to get, you know, my my higher power didn't bring me this far to leave me and that, you know, I still have a story to tell. And, and you know, whatever it is, I can get through it, whether it is something or it's not, you know. And, and it's like, I guess this is just another thing, another notch in my belt for me to speak on this, you know. And to let other women know that they should follow through on this stuff. And so I've been very public about this um, on, in social media because I think it's important, you know, because yeah, we all go I mean, through this. Especially because, you know, especially as addicts, people tend not to take care of themselves. It's, <laughs> we yeah. think you know, if we don't handle it, it doesn't exist. Yeah, there you is know, a level of it's denial. It's the male thing. It's the yeah. male it, thing. You know, yeah, it's like all a, the male and people, what I'm saying about the male thing is, and I've joked about this, but I did it. I used to think if I didn't answer the male, it wasn't there. And a lot of addicts and alcoholics tend to think that yeah. if you don't go to, if you so, don't go to the doctor, you're not sick. So Jennifer, just yeah. you going and checking on yeah. things is a huge, huge. step. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, and considering then I did, your past. Thank you. Know you. I mean? Thank yeah. you. I, I went to I landed on Monday night at like three in the morning, two in the morning, and I was at back at two doctors this week for different things and you know, getting the second opinion this week and then we'll see where we'll take it from there. But I'm being proactive instead right. of like just sitting back and not going to the doctors or not following through if it's physical therapy I need to do because I don't want to live like this, you know, and I don't want to live in fear of whatever is happening in my life and that, you know, there is still so much that to go on with and, you know, the support that I've gotten and the people reaching out, men included on, on social media, telling me their stories that they've overcome or like what happened to them or that they're scared to go do something and that they're doing it because I'm doing it and like, I'm like, let's all hold hands and do this together, you know, and it's just been amazing and people who have showed up through like, you know, the breakup and then this and, and you know, new people in my life and like I'm allowing myself the process to have people come into my life and mm. love me you know and and you know you just pay it forward you yep. just yeah, I'm such a hypochondriac. If I actually get something, I feel relieved. <laughs> well, well, I think that the reason that probably is in your case is because it, then you know you're, you know then you could deal with it. Yeah. Well, you then know. I know what to do. Then, then exactly. Yeah. But, but how many of us? All the other things I'm worried about, I yeah. just don't know what to do about it. What? Is, by the way, if you just tuned in, you are listening to Clean Radio. Give us a call. The number is eight hundred two 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 five two two two. That's eight hundred two 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 five two two two. Of course, in studio tonight with is Jennifer. Easy on the Eisen Man is one of the sweetest, and I love that you're sharing this story. And Andrew Spanzwick also talking about that you've gone through stuff because 
but we talk a lot, and both of us have had some physical issues that are sometimes embarrassing to talk about. You want to talk about it? I want to hear it. Oh, gosh, here we go. No, no, no. (laughs) We have issues that men have at a certain... They're embarrassing. They're they're embarrassing to talk about. Okay. And... um, and, and, Keep it sexy. Keep it sexy. That's exactly right. We have Jennifer... He's he's got the eyes he met us. Nobody really wants to get the visual of Andrew and I, but these are things that terrify, you know, that are terrifying, but you go through it like you said. It's good that I have you to share them with. (laughs) And it's... You know, that's what I always say. Share your secret, like secrets, with somebody who talks about you on the radio every week. It's a great idea. And uh, but you know what, like Jennifer's doing is like even writing about it in the article today. Buddy, you know, Buddy read the article this morning and he called me up or he texted me later, going, "I get it. I've been through what you're going through. I get the pain that you know of and the fear. You know, it's it, for alcoholics and addicts. I don't know what it is. I really don't know what it is. It's the male thing, like we said, but we're terrified." Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I think a lot of a lot of addicts tend to have a lot of anxiety, so everything tends to be sort of fear based, you know. And so yep. the immediate go to place is fear. It's not happening. And, let's avoid it. Yeah, and so then you just try to deny the the problem so that you don't feel fear. And you know, it's true. Like it takes a courageous person to live life. You know, life is difficult. Yeah, um, it is. and it's easier not to feel anything. And I think that's why so many people are using experimenting with drugs these days. It's much easier just not to feel things and then just float through life and pretend it's not really happening. It's harder to actually confront the Mm. daily challenges of life and deal with it and, you know, be productive and involved and connected to the world. So many people aren't. That's amazing you're saying that. I was having this conversation with somebody just the other day, too. Um, Like, uh, because I'm going through these things, I have to feel everything. And, like, I tell, like I say, like, you know, the difference between you and I, like, because I'm around people who drink. I'm not, you know, I got sober to live a full life. So... I'm not like hiding in my room in you know a nun outfit or something and and um, we never thought you were <laughs> but if you were it might be very interesting but I did play a nun in uh, Charlie's Angels I just thought I, so. I, I love that <laughs> Judah's <laughs> fantasy just got killed though because that was his fantasy for you was the nun <laughs> in the closet but yeah you know me yeah. so well <laughs> <laughs> well we know all our secrets yeah. Judah I know I just Get thought I'd throw that one out there <laughs> but you know I was like you know the difference between you and I is that you can drink a drink and like kind of relax I have to feel everything you know and that we do have to go through this stuff and feel it you know yeah absolutely who could drink a drink she was saying my normie friends oh 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 i was like i was like who in the studio (laughs) i'm like looking around the studio going who who (laughs) introduce me let me tell you if i knew i wouldn't tell you the secret what? Because you would say it out loud. Never mind. It went so south. Oh uh, yeah. What thanks. was that? <laughs> Thank you. Stick stick to the serious movies. Oh my um, God. Charlie's Angels. <laughs> yeah. um, Just stay in movies. Don't go yeah. to films. I, I, <laughs> and but I, you know, again, it's I love that you're out there talking about this stuff because people are getting help. It's it's no different than. Um, you know, we've you know the you know whether it's Tony Dennison who's been in here, Eddie McClintock that openly share that they're you know that they're sober and their fans are able you know that watch their TV shows have a bond and you've created a bond with all your loyal fans and it's sort of really super cool thank you and that I, means I, a lot honestly yeah. that means a I, lot. I i actually follow your posts i love reading their stuff because it is it there's strength in numbers and uh if you're out there and you just tuned in you are listening to clean radio uh we have jennifer Jimenez in uh the question tonight is can an alcoholic uh or a drug addict that's sober successfully Take narcotics for pain for for the for the pain they might be in. So give us a call. The number is 800-222-5222. That's 800-222-5222. We'll be back in a couple seconds um, with the lovely and talented Jennifer Easy on the Eyes Jimenez. Um, and because we're of get what, a new nickname before we get back, we will. And because of everything you've done for us, Jennifer, this song. If uh, no, Jose lost it. I actually had an amazing song. You did? Yeah. Wow. And we'll was, sing it. Sing it on the intro. Really nice. on, give it a it's shot. You Will Be My Hero by Mark that's Anthony. That's not singing it. That's just saying the title. Wow. You Will Be My Hero. Yeah, I don't know. Keep going. To, I'm not constipated <laughs> enough to sound like Mark Anthony. And, uh, okay, we'll be back in a couple seconds. The discussion continues on oh, Clean Radio. I love you. That was so sweet. <laughs> Are you addicted to drugs or alcohol but unable to commit to an inpatient rehab stay? Introducing Clean Treatment Center's Outpatient Treatment. This drug and alcohol treatment program is designed specifically for the working profession. Don't let your commitments of running a business, taking care of a child, or maintaining your college classes get in the way of your recovery from addiction. With daytime, evening, or individualized programs, Clean's outpatient treatment will fit your life. Call now for a free screening. Professional guidance is standing by. Welcome everybody out there listening to Clean Radio and on our new station, News Radio 1120 KPNW. 
It's Eugene, Oregon. One of my favorite towns in Oregon is Eugene. Um, that's actually... <laughs> Have you been there, Eugene? <laughs> I think I probably drove through Eugene. Now you got to go to Eugene. I, I, well, I'm going up to Portland uh, pretty soon. Yep. Uh, so I'm going to be doing a... Uh, I'm going to be saying hello to every town. You look like you belong in Portland. You got glasses. You know, that's the biggest <laughs> you know, compliment like, you could pay because our Portland listeners, I and plus I have the great shirt that Andrew. Oh, you're so cute. Andrew, you look so Andrew Portlandia, in the, Portlandia, doesn't he? Andrew, Andrew, Andrew in the fire department gave me. I mean, it's in, <laughs> it says Judah. It's really cool. So thank you so I think much. It's awesome. It, it is awesome. And he did it for my 16-year birthday. And uh, welcome back, everybody. Sweet so, 16. So, <laughs> that's, Uh-oh. <laughs> you know, somebody actually gave me that card. Oh, you know what? Everybody from Clean signed the card that said, Happy Sweet. 16. So I was honored. Thank you, buddy. And uh, Jennifer Jimenez is back in studio with us tonight. But we also have, before we get to your calls, a question tonight out there is can somebody that's uh, sober um, successfully take narcotics if they have you know to what? for pain? That, that's the worstly phrased question, by the How way. How about phrase it for me? anybody can successfully yeah. take narcotics. <laughs> so ask the question in a better way. The question is, can you take narcotics and not have a relapse? That's a, that's a, oh, you know what? Andrew, you win the better phrasing question uh, it's award called, tonight. It's called English. It's the language. <laughs> You're working on it. So, buddy, and buddy Totten is in to tell us what's cooking on social media. What's going on, bud? Hey, what's happening? So, um, we did get some very good responses on this. Uh, Angie says, uh, yes, uh, limited supply of narcotics. Uh, to have somebody, uh, obviously, under doctor supervision. And uh, she was has the idea of uh, stashing the medication. So, the... Uh, uh, addict doesn't know where it's at and have it administered by you know a loved uh, one. A, right. a loved one. You can't stash yeah. your own medicine. No. <laughs> well, I tried, I to, mean, I I tried, tried to do that. You know. And, I did you know what? Every alcoholic yeah. and addict has tried to stash. Oh, yeah. They forget where they live. Yeah. That's, exactly right. That's the worst. I did yeah. that a lot. What else do we got, buds? Uh, and then uh, uh, Heather says that she has uh, successfully after surgeries and she's still clean and uh, she took uh, her meds as directed for two or three days and then she she tossed it because she realized. Amazing. She didn't need it, yeah. and then she had someone help her uh, dispense the medication. And you know, you've also that's had a so thing. common with addicts too, though. Like they don't realize that you don't have to take the whole, you know, right. bottle. Right. You know what I mean? Well, that's the change. That's the change. That's the change. When you get sober, you realize, oh, I could take this as prescribed. Mm-hmm. Right. Th- right. This was actually prescribed, and it works. Yeah. That was so always amazing. To you've me. had an experience with this. I have. Yeah. Just recently. Oh. Yeah. Because you had a moped accident. I had a moped accident. And that was your cue to share. Go ahead. <laughs> right. I, I am. So I, I, I had an accident, and uh, the paramedics were called, and uh, uh, the pain was escalating. My body started to lock up, and the first thing I was scared to death, first thing I told the paramedics was like, look, I'm an addict. I'm in recovery. Please do not give me any narcotics. Please don't. Please don't. So I held it off for as long as I could. And uh, I knew that, uh, you know, my body, you know, I I just, I couldn't move. And so I started, I was able to make phone calls. And so, you know, I called, uh, I called uh, my sponsor, I called my family, I called my friend Rod Espudo. And uh, finally Rod, you know, told me, she said, look, you know, this is a legitimate reason. You just got into a motorcycle accident. So, you know, you can either take four milligrams of morphine now. Or you can be a tough guy and wait and have to take a whole bunch later, and then we start to reach the danger zone as far as your addiction goes. So you know what? I followed everybody's advice, and I kept in contact with everybody all along through the whole process. And I think that's the message that we're sending. And I'm still clean. Yeah. 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 Well, that was the the story we were looking for. Yeah, that is actually, that's exactly right. So, Buddy Totten, thank you very much. You're very welcome. And if you just tuned in, you are listening to Clean Radio. Give us a call. The number is 800-222-5222. That's 800-222-5222. Jennifer Easy on the Eyes Jimenez is with us, and she's... uh, you say it's so thought, stale. Like, you're, you're like, we Jennifer, are you feeling eyes okay, with us? Okay, by the end of the show, I will have something new. <laughs> Do oh not do anything gosh. corny, though. I'll be really pissed. You've okay. got to beat easy on the eyes now yes. by the end of the show. It's a lot of pressure, so okay. p- please, everybody I know that's listening, uh, <laughs> th- just text me some good stuff. Uh, and uh, Heather just wanted to call and check in. Heather, as always, welcome to Clean Radio. Oh, Heather. Yes, it's me. Hi, honey. Hi, it's lovely to hear you as always. Oh, it's nice to hear you. This is like cat Thank people know, talk, right? <laughs> yeah. This is I, like I just yeah, I yeah. just did somebody put catnip in the yeah. phone or something. <laughs> Heather, how are you? I'm I'm doing okay. You know, I'm having the seasonal thing, but I decided to be proactive about it. I had my annual physical on Friday and we, we uh, my doctor and I decided to start taking Wellbutrin as a, as an adjunct to my normal antidepressant because uh, it's been shown to be effective with SAD. So. Oh well, cool. What, what's your normal antidepressant? Selexa. 
Oh, so, oh it was Selexa. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah but as part of the, uh, you know, part of the, the topic is that I think that it's kind of, it's crazy when people tell people not to take antidepressants or uh, medications like that. When you tell a schizophrenic not to take medication or tell somebody a lot of bipolar people have. not to take medication. Yeah. A lot of people have. You know, it's really interesting because if you look back at the history of the treatment of schizophrenia, um, there was a, a lot of people thought that talk therapy would actually work. So, you know, we've come a long way since 1950. So, uh, you know, it's but it's interesting that there is a commonality between um, a lot of what we talk about in addiction and a lot of what's happened in the past with um, other types of psychiatric disorders. Um, and we tend to start thinking that talking alone will do it. And then over time, we find out that there's much more complexity to the brain. And I think we're just at the beginning of that. Um, in in terms of addiction studies and medicine. So it's going to be interesting. But uh, Jennifer, I also want to just thank you again. You haven't said anything about it this time, but, you know, I wanted to, uh, you know, praise you for the whole sober book. Oh, site. thank you. Yeah, I haven't gotten to that yet. We just keep cross-talking, so. Yeah. We're, we're thank you. Ahead. I'm so glad that you write your stories, though. They're amazing. I mean, I only know because... You tell me which chapter and stuff. Yeah, Heather, you're, yeah, cheating, on, you're on cheating on Clean Radio with Jennifer <laughs> Silverbook? But yeah. I, I thought, what, what is this? I thought you were... I, you know, I don't know what's going on. I don't know either. I thought you were our number one fan. What's, I know. What's, She's I'm, my girl. I'm, I'm a little She's hurt. my girl that came here. I, we, we, had, we, we had Heather first. Wait, Heather? Yes? Are you mine first? I'm claiming. I'm trying to claim. Yeah. Heather was with Clean Radio first. Were you Heather? No, I think oh. Jennifer was. Uh, thank you. <laughs> What's up? Bring it. Yeah, yeah because, because, uh, because uh, you know, I actually only started Clean Radio about September of last year. Oh. Yeah, so we've been friends longer than that. Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Well, maybe it was two. I don't know. It, it doesn't, doesn't matter. But we're the more recent ones. Yeah. Heather, um, I feel like I just like like I'm sitting next to my girlfriend in bed, and she's having a conversation with somebody on the phone. I can hear it. <laughs> <laughs> that's but, not good but, because you know, that's, uh, <laughs> you know, life does happen when you're yeah. sober. And it Jennifer, sure I, I hear you about your breakup. You know, I got divorced in February, and uh, still have unresolved uh, stuff to do with that and i actually called my ex-husband uh recently because somebody we knew had a baby and i was letting him know and he's like oh i got this job and at the end of the month i'm moving to california you know oh yeah so. you know it's it's tough i'm sure a divorce you know i mean a, a broken heart is a broken heart and uh I realize that I've had to like kind of turn around everything around and realize where I did what I, like forgive myself, you know, and like what, what did I settle? Did I not? What what happened on my side, you know? And and to forgive myself, really, you know. And I think it's important that you do that too. Yeah. You but know, anyway, what, I'm gonna, I'll, I'm, I'll, Heather, I'll I'm just going to say this before you leave, and I'm going to say, yep. and Jennifer, I agree with. You. This, we're we're going to have this whole topic one of these weeks, and it's, it's going to be about dating and sobriety. You know, we really we, are. We had a great conversation outside be, because we did, and it's it. This is. Forget about, I, I could do a whole, we, Andrew and I, we could do a whole thing on this, but... Uh, I'm not dating in the rooms. You, you know, about anymore. dating, where do you find people to date? It's really hard dating in sobriety. It's one of the toughest... Have people uh, set you up? That's a good uh, way. You know, I got I'm a stab, so I don't want to... <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was going to say something. So, Heather, uh, thank you very much for Hi. the uh, call, and uh, I always love reading your post, too, Heather. Hi. Bye, Bye, honey. Bye. So good to hear you. Bye-bye. All right, thanks. And good if, to hear you. Oh, bye, Heather. And if you just tuned in, you are listening to Clean Radio. That was Heather checking in from Vermont. Give us a call. The number is 800 222 5222. That's 800 222 5222. In studio with Jennifer Menace tonight. Of course, Andrew Spanswick. <laughs> Buddy Totten's been doing the social media. So go to cleanradio.com slash facebook.com slash clean radio. Tell us what you think. We love hearing from you. Um, we're talking about tonight narcotics and sobriety and having to. You know, and having to deal with it and having to take it, I think Buddy came up with a great approach to yeah. how you deal with it. And, and and I think one of the things with the common theme we're all talking about in here is that we have a support system. Mm -hmm. You know, we have we have doctors, we have friends. and um, But the first step is actually being honest about what's, you know, yeah. calling them. And for, for an addict and alcoholic, I mean, how many times, Andrew and I, we have this conversation where I'm like, are you okay? And yes. Mm -hmm. No, really, are you okay? You know, and uh, until you finally want to, you know, it's even outside. You, get, you go, you look alone. Yeah, my psychiatrist yeah. told me that's part of my um, problem with, uh, 
you know, my hypochondria is that you and I keep just ruminating over it all the time. So I can't, I'm going to have so, to stop talking to you, Judah. But we have the same psychiatrist, so it's okay. <laughs> it, all evens out, it all evens out in the wash. Um, so, Jennifer, you've been going through some medical issues lately. You've spoken about it. You've been going through some breakup issues. So you're talking basically about those a couple things when people are sober that, you know, they say finances and romance. Roman, I know it's both of it. Yeah. And, and you know... I always said, like, a lot of people go, well, I didn't get sober to, to deal with this stuff, you know, and, like, this is life, you know, and, and um, I feel like through the years now, and I'm sure, I, three years ago, I went to your guys' little studio way back in, in Anaheim, and it's so different yeah. now, and I remember I had just ended a, a relationship then, a long-term one, and... Every and time we switch I stations, know, I'm like, she loses ending a relationship. Wow. Uh, I'm waiting for Mr. Wright, um, and... Uh, Does that mean we have to... <laughs> We won't have don't, to switch it up. Don't move. Okay, don't, don't move. Don't move. Yeah. Just stay put. What about Mr. Right now? <laughs> hey, hey, hey. hey. Wow. We've worked really together Judah? before we came to go yeah, there. I don't know. It's Mr. Uh, right now, Judah. <laughs> but oh you gosh. guys have, like, I mean, I remember I was going through a lot of stuff because I was not just going through a breakup, but I was going through life stuff. Like, and you said to me, it's going to get better, kid. Just hang in there. And, like, I would call you, and I talked about this before. In She's fetal. pointing at Judah. <laughs> and, yeah. And fetal for the position and crying hysterically and like you know Judah's not about feelings he's like okay all right you're gonna be fine and then I just stay there and he'd stay on the phone with me and like so much you were so right about everything like so much has changed you know and and it's true like the romance and and you kind of get tested like where you're at and the finance and you know the traveling and losing people get you know getting new people and all this stuff like it's just life. You Do you know? think there's a chance Judah could be more than just a listening friend? <laughs> <laughs> next time. Next, I... next time on Clean Radio. Uh, give us a call. The number is 800-222-5222. That's 800-222-5222. You know, again, um, we're all sober in the studio. Um, you know, because addicts don't like the listening ones. Because it's, it's like, they're, oh, this one's too easy. I'm trying but to get you know, away from this topic. But he's, he's gotten a lot harder over time. <laughs> just putting it out there. That just sounded really bad. I know. And, it did um, sound bad. You look like you have wow. a sailor's hat on. It's, uh, <laughs> oh, wow, Judah, it's not your night. It is, it, it's really off tonight. Um, Jennifer, we're going to have a talking sailor. afterwards. A wow. talking. Talking. A talking. I've never like, had a talking sounds after. Like a, sounds like a movie. I know. It's the talking. <laughs> but here's the thing, you know, everybody's listening out there. We're all a bunch of sober people. And, okay. And, um, <laughs> Nutty no, but that's, sober people. That's it. That's it. And I, I hope that people are we listening are, because true. we have yeah. a lot of this with families sometimes. And we, it, it this is a long process once your family member gets sober. Right. And we're a kooky bunch. Yeah. No, it's, you know? Yeah, but ridiculous. why not and, be? Like, but, but it's a lot more fun, the kookiness. In, you know, you always say, Andrew, the loudest table in the restaurant, the one laughing is usually the sober table. Right. Yeah. And, you know, so if, if we sound a little kooky, and you, <laughs> and, and, and if, if you're wondering, <laughs> is this really as good as it gets? Yes. Well, for Judah, yes. <laughs> yeah, pretty much is. No, and and we have fun, and we laugh, and we talk, and we and we joke about stuff that sounds morbid, but that's how we get through this yeah. stuff, you know. And it's like when I saw your posts, you know, when I saw what you were going through, and I saw the love that people sent you, and some of it was joking, some of it was serious. Yeah. And the I think it's, machine, it's, it's, they're calling it. And like, it yeah, it's <laughs> it's extreme. <laughs> that's, it's, that's what they called it. It's extremely right, though. So, um, you know, yeah. And I think that's what I makes... I think this has to be the funniest episode of Clean Radio ever. Yay, me! Yay, us! That's awesome. That's right. Right. And as long as we're laughing, we're happy. We don't care about right. all the people that are listening. And, okay. uh, you know... <laughs> just, just bury oh, Judah. We're just going to bury Judah in his... <laughs> He his, loves it. And his navy hat. <laughs> and my awesome like, navy shirt. You look like and your navy, like and a you're, And you're colorblind because it's black shirt. Black hat. Um, so no, it's white. white. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know the color of your own hat? Now it's black. It's back no, to black. No, it's still white on it's the back other side. Well, okay, okay, it's back in black. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's both. Okay. I don't yeah. even know what you say about that. Um, who doesn't... Who, like, sits there and... My Blame God. someone for the color, <laughs> the color of their hat wrong when I'm obviously looking at it. My hat is black. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, this, I'm is, sorry. this is rough tonight. Um, I don't even know where to go next. But it's always okay. it's Panther with love. Let's talk Fetal, about, go let's, talk about let's talk about um, love, good self hearts. esteem and sobriety. Yes. And being able to hang out <laughs> and, with your friends and, and rip you apart. And I will have none <laughs> of and I will have I will have none of it when I leave the show. Yeah. <laughs> Can I tell you something actually really funny yeah. that we say that? Because sure. my mother actually just texted me during the show about the right. article I wrote and she actually uh -huh. corrected a spelling error. Oh, <laughs> there wow. you go. Nice. You know, because your mother does the same thing yep. and yep. uh 
it's uh, that, that's that's the text I got during the show. Not great show, son. I love you. Not it's uh, it's you have quite the texting error or the uh, spelling error. So give us a call. It's 800-222-5222. That's 800-222-5222. I think Judah was in the sun too much today or something. You are really a little too tan, by the way. Uh, yeah. Oh my He's God. all pink. He's like pink with his white hat on. Like, Black, you mean. Right? You know, you know, you, you know it's great. Hat. I have 13 more minutes of this. Okay. And then I have your nicknames. Um, and guys, it's uh, not going to be as Jay, good as... Jay, tell you how cute you look today. Thank you. And it's not going to be as good as Jennifer <laughs> Easy on the Eyes Jimenez. Um, yeah, still using the same name? So still I have 10 more minutes. It's 10 more minutes. <laughs> but let's get to helping people for the next 10 minutes. Okay. Let's do it. Oh, okay. God. Let's do it. All right. How are you going to do it, Jennifer? Save somebody's soul. Speak. Hi. What is Soberbook.com? Sober, soberbook.com is a magazine and uh, a website that I am partnership with, in partnership with in South Florida. It's a 10,000 magazines distributed in South Florida, and uh, you go and you write your story. You're the, mag you're the writer, we're the magazine, and um, it's about overcoming any kind of adversity, obstacle issue. And, I like that uh, line. You're the writer, we're the magazine. Yeah. That's, that's cool. That and actually is a pretty good You know, our <laughs> motto is like, what's your story? Like, I, you know, I've said this a million times. Like, I believe we all have a story to tell. It's up to us how to tell it. And, right. um, you know, a lot of people have come out about things that they would normally never say anything to anyone else because they're too embarrassed about or scared to tell. And, you know, we have stories about incest survivors, being the loved one of an addict, um, alcohol, drugs, you know, eating disorders. People are, like, saying their truth. Like, you know, some of it's like, I have, I don't know how to get out of here. I don't even want to get out of here. And yet that's a story in itself, you know. And um, and it's been really amazing. Like, I just got Renee Graziano from the Mob Wives to write a story. She came to me and she wrote a story about, like, botched surgeries and being an addict and overcoming that. Are you and hanging out with safe people? Yes. Okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, mob wives. Yeah. Even stuff, if like, it wasn't, I'm not going to worry. Like, of, yeah, course. Right. Right. of course. Yeah. Yes. Of course. Yes. Okay. Week, quick. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so basically what it sounds like is a four. I mean, it's obviously because I've read it. I know what it is, but it's a story for people just to be able to tell their stories. Yeah. To tell you, their stories. You actually yeah. read it? Pay it yeah. forward. I love, I love actually Sober Book. It's actually very interesting. You have some great articles in there. We have and football I, players yeah. writing stories. I, mean, I just love everyone. I love the diversity of people telling their stories and feeling like, you know, because one of the complaints in certain things is that you hear these, it's the same old dodgy stories and, you know, and in this case you get to hear people are just being honest and people are being real. No names, no faces, yeah. it's anonymous, yeah. you know, and, and that really hasn't really been done. So it's been amazing, the feedback. I think I getting. found out where my copy went. <laughs> it's online, Andrew. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so. See, I'm still looking for magazines. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That's terrible. I'm having the best time. Right. Um, okay. But, you know, I, that's I just, all that matters. It, it really, well, right? Radio, I'm going to be, I'm, I'm gonna be so. very depressed later, but you guys are happy. <laughs> happy. Just look at us with, like, evil eyes, we're like, all, trying to we're, smile. We're all good. Okay. Um, that's my back pain. <laughs> okay. Um, so go on. How do um, people find it? They go to, uh, to soberbook.com and uh, you go on there and you write your story. And then it's submitted automatically? It's submitted and then you become a chapter. But I we pre-read everything to make sure there's no names or institutions or places, you know. Um, so we I, we black all that stuff out. And you still have the uh, person of the month? Yes, we do. And who was the I person of the month? Renee Graziano. Renee Graziano. Yeah. I got to watch some more reality. You see, even that name. I She's a Bonanno. Uh, her father was... Van the Bonanno family. Oh, okay, very cool. Yeah. Okay. She talks about it on uh, Oh, Mobiles. I'm definitely going to read it now. Yeah. Because I'm scared if I no, don't. But Kristen Johnson wrote her like third story. Like she keeps giving me stories, which is amazing. Like she loves that, you know. And, and Kristen Johnson mm -hmm. being from Third Rock. From yeah, the and sun, Austin know. Powers. And yeah. um, she's on execs her fourth season starting this. That's awesome. And you are Jennifer Jimenez. I uh, am. Uh, so give us a call, as always. The number is 888-601-6040. <laughs> right. That's 888-601-6040. But let's go to Steve calling from Santa Clarita. Welcome to Clean Radio, Steve. Hey, thank you guys so much. I just caught the tail end of that being the loudest in the room, as always, yeah. the soapers people. Yeah. Came into that. I used to be a chapter president for a bunch of alcoholics and uh, narcotic addicts but i tell you we'd come out of a closed door meeting and people would be saying to the uh waitresses and waiters where they got in there don perio what do they drink yeah. and yeah. one of the guys told them these this is an aa group and yeah. they looked at the guy and they did not believe him but the, being sober the food tastes so much better the conversation <laughs> with people in aa is real the laughing from the gut hurts so bad because it's real it's not a phony laugh Everything is so much better. You tell that to an alcoholic or someone that's still using it, they don't believe it. When I first walked into AA, I told everybody, I'm nothing like these people. 
But God, James, it's so much, it's so amazing that, you know, life is so much better. It's hard to convince someone till they get there. Isn't that, thank, but, you, but, uh, thank you, Steve. Um, thank you. And call That's in a great call. Thanks, Steve. And I love that he said that because it's funny that most people, when they do come in, they oh, they still are feeling isolated, like I'm different. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. You know, it's, you know. Well, That's part of the illness. Yeah. I mean, part of addiction is you isolate more and more and you feel like people are not like you and. You that know. still comes up for me now. Like yeah. I can isolate myself. Uh, isolate myself. Like I'll be like, oh, but you know, I can't. I, you know, it's a little different for me. It's not. Right. I yeah. have to check myself with that. Well, I think I think even I I as you're staying sober, a lot of that's that fear thing, though. You know, we were talking about earlier. Like if you're fear based and like your whole approach to things, then can tend to be a little paranoid about stuff as well. Like you know, oh, you know, maybe people are looking at me too much. As you're staring at me, that's very funny. <laughs> Uh, it's, uh, I'm going to definitely need some uh, therapy after this show. Uh, so please, everybody, go to facebook.com slash clean radio. Private message me your love because I so need it tonight. Aww. This is, this is how we, this is, see, the thing is, Jennifer's going on about how she's single, but Jude is single too. And so, and so is Buddy. Uh, are and so, you? And buddy, so is Monique uh, Moss from Integrated PR. You so don't know? I'm getting married. Yep. Yeah. Wait, what? Yeah. Like, where have I yeah. been? In Florida, <laughs> I, I think. Know. Yeah, I'm getting married. I think married. the more exciting part is I'm skydiving into the wedding. Yeah, Jude is going to skydive into the wedding. And you that's are? Gonna, yeah, that's gonna, are you going to come? He, he promised it us. Am I being invited? February 7th, yeah. yeah. I would married. love to. Oh, yeah. In Can the air? Can we talk about this on the yeah. air? Yeah. But you just have to reform yeah, some yeah, Jude is going to skydive into the wedding. That's amazing. But he's going to be there. It's going to be great. I want to come. Yeah. Yeah, okay. It's uh, we'll think awesome. about it. Uh, if you, he just yeah. invited me, <laughs> but, <laughs> but we're a couple, so I make the decision. Yeah, you gotta go with Judah. That's, that's the only requirement. He didn't say who he was marrying, <laughs> and again, and again, but again, that's an amazing thing. Is is you're getting married, and um, <laughs> you know we have. It a is amazing because there's no th possibility that I could ever have gotten married, Wait. right? <laughs> yes, exactly. Let's get a uh, John calling from Parkland, Florida. Welcome to Clean Radio. Hey guys, how you doing? Good. Hey, Jennifer. Hi. Hi. I was just wondering. I'm started a relationship with uh, someone in recovery. Get and out. I'm not an addict, and I was no, just no. wondering if you could give me some advice on the do's and don'ts. Dating someone that's not an addict. Hmm. No, dating someone who is an addict. Oh, he's is not. An addict and he's not. Oh, you're not. Wow. There's Go to Alan on. Um, my biggest thing would be listen yeah. carefully to what is being told to you. Um, you know, and take things seriously if, if the topic comes up. Okay. Um, my second advice would be, um, you know, ask politely if it's okay if you have a drink, if you want to have a drink. And, yeah, that's and, important. You know, that's actually a great just, plan. Yeah, just ask politely, you know, is it okay if I feel drink? Do you feel comfortable about it? Um, and just be sensitive to, you know, the environment and what's going on. But the big thing is listen because... Most people that are addicts that are in recovery, they'll know what to tell you. They'll tell mm -hmm. you yeah. when they're uncomfortable. But if you don't listen or you think it's not a big deal, that's the part that's not going to work. So okay. how you, long have, you, you, have, how, you have to be willing to support that is like one of the primary problems of that person's life. And they have there's certain rules that they have. And I, for me to go through them all in the air is not as important as you just listening and hearing what they are from, from the person you're with. Yeah, communicating is so important. How long Absolutely. are they sober? Uh, I believe nine years. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, that's and, um, yeah. you know, I, can you do me a favor? Because I actually want to talk about this uh, a little more, John. Can you give us a call next week? Sure. Because I, I, I actually want to talk about this topic, delve into it, because I think it's really important to talk about. Um, I myself have dated outside of the program, and it was, an, it was the best relationship of my life. It was really the only one. But uh, <laughs> let, me, let me be honest and preface that. Um, That's what it so, took. It took him getting sober to yeah. even get a relationship. But I, I, I really want, John, to so do us a favor. Call us back next week and let well us, done. and, and uh, okay? Good luck. Thank That's you. That's a really great question. Bye. Bye. And good luck to you. And uh, that question is, could we, that's a whole show of uh, just talking about dating and uh, yeah. dating somebody sober, dating in the 12-step rooms and all that stuff. But that's stuff. amazing because he sounds like he actually cared, yeah. you know, enough well, I hope to... so. He's dating her. Yeah. yeah. Or him. I didn't... But, no, uh, I think he probably her. He sounded cute. It's part of Yeah, he sounded cute. What, there's no cute gay guys? <laughs> no, he sounded cute and straight. I thought gay guys were really cute. That was no, the whole thing. No, they are. Thing. Oh, okay. But... Oh, okay. <laughs> we're actually going to video Skype him next week to find out. And if you just tuned in... <laughs> that's what Judah was we, telling me. We should me. bet on this. You are listening to get married, you should first check out the cute gay guys. You are listening to Clean Radio, but we have one last caller who I wanted to take, and it's Andrew from uh, Portland. Andrew. Hello. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I love the shirt you gave well, me, Andrew. Oh, 
Oh, oh, this I'm is glad you like it. Yeah. Wow. Andrew's actually a firefighter, and um, I don't know how much you want to say. Are you? Are you? Uh, you know about your own life? But uh, well, you know that I just uh, you know I sent you that Facebook message about um, you know the, there's a lot of people in public safety, firefighters, uh, EMTs, uh, police officers, dispatchers. Uh, what have you, you know, military people that are uh, struggling. And it's, we have uh, these things called egos, and we do not want to um, let anybody else know that we have these problems. And there's no, really no resources out there that I've found on the Internet for these people. So I just wanted you to see if you could get that message out saying, you know, if you are you know, struggling and you're in this field because you see a lot of trauma, you see a lot of things that you shouldn't see, but that's your daily job and you do it, you know, because you have a brother-in-law, I believe. That yeah, my brother in laws in the fire department in New York. And I, NY, yeah, right? and I was actually, just so you, we're running out of time at Andrew, I want you to call back next week and I love the shirt. I was actually in a rehab in upstate New York that solely catered to the fire department, to police, and you're right. Is it Tully Hill? No, it was called Veritas Villa, and it's oh, actually was, an it's actually an yeah. amazing place that huh. that deals with a lot of the city workers. But you're right, and it's 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 um, it's another topic for another about the, the the people that save our lives out there that get addicted, and there is help for firemen, for for all the people, the military. There is help, and sometimes mm -hmm. it's not enough. Obviously, it's not enough. But uh, Andrew, I love the shirt. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. I'm I'm really glad, glad you like it, yeah. and uh, you didn't have to wear it on the air, but that's well, he's really been wearing cool. it all week. Yeah, I've been wearing <laughs> it. I've been this, walking this around. Become, I, you know, I'm really glad that somebody gave Judah right. something, and he really does appreciate <laughs> it. But it's been annoying for the rest of us. Yes. I have to tell you because he's had been wearing it all yeah. week, literally, yeah. and then telling <laughs> the story to everyone. I have been. Andrew. He told it to me three times. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. He told me twice yeah. this week. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and and Andrew, your uh, Joy Division shirt last week rocked, man. Thanks, man. <laughs> yeah, actually, I'm excited. I'm gonna go see uh, the bass player from Joy Division is doing a show, doing uh, closer and movements, the two albums back to back. Cool. So nice. that should be really neat. Be so, okay, we nice. gotta run. Andrew, okay. call back <laughs> anytime, and from the bottom of my heart, thank you, and thank okay. you for all you do. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, that was Andrew, uh, one of the nicest gestures. Sent me a shirt from. That's awesome. You know, he's in the fire department. It's a, it's a. I love it. How cool is that, Jennifer? You get a lot of shirts from. You know, firemen. I don't, I don't have as many. I don't have as many. Uh, yeah, that's, that's exactly right. And she's got. Yeah. That's uh, that's just a quarter of the closet. And uh, buddy, I want to yeah. buddy, I want to thank you, you Jennifer. Man. It's soberbuck.com. Write your oh story. God. I love you guys. Thank you that so much. That was a fun much. show. Yeah. You know. I know. It was great. It's I miss you guys. It's good to get some guys. serious topics, yeah, but also get That's exactly see, right. Yeah, and, uh, Thank you. Jennifer, I want to get better Jimenez. And, oh, um, whoa. Our fans out thank there. Whoever thank sang everybody. You. Thank you for ever sending you that uh, nickname. <laughs> it's the song I want to get better. <laughs> okay. <right>. okay. <laughs> Are you addicted to drugs or alcohol but unable to commit to an inpatient rehab stay? Introducing Clean Treatment Center's Outpatient Treatment. This drug and alcohol treatment program is designed specifically for the working professional. Don't let your commitments of running a business, taking care of a child, or maintaining your college classes get in the way of your recovery from addiction. With daily Time, evening, or individualized programs, Clean's outpatient treatment will fit your life. Call now for a free screening. Professional guidance is standing by.